Welcome to Chatting the Pictures. My name is Kara Finnegan, and I'm a writer, teacher, and historian of photography. And I'm Michael Shaw. I'm a writer, a psychologist, and also publisher of Reading the Pictures. Photos unveiled by the January 6th committee dramatically illustrate the threat, both to Vice President Pence as well as America's democracy. But when it came time to certify Biden's election, did the pictures reveal Pence as a hero or someone who enabled the crisis by waiting to the very last minute to defy Donald Trump? In an image released by the House Committee investigating the January 6th uprising, then-Vice President Pence watches President Trump ask rioters that stormed the U.S. Capitol to leave. Pence's daughter, Charlotte, stands beside him. Pence and his entourage spent almost five hours secured away in a Capitol loading dock after rioters came within 40 feet of the vice president while chanting for his death. Refusing to leave the building, Pence reconvened the Senate that evening to finish certifying the election of Joe Biden. Trump had been publicly pressuring Pence to block the certification, not just for weeks, but throughout the day. Other key photos released by the committee include one from about 2.15 from a room off the Senate floor as Karen Pence pulls a curtain to hide the entourage from the view of the rioters who had just breached the building. There's one more in the loading dock of Pence looking at his phone. It was likely taken around 2.25 as Trump attacked Pence on Twitter for failing to stop the certification process, heightening the fury of the mob. The one we're looking at, as Pence observes Trump's stand-down video, was taken at approximately 4.17 in the afternoon. That phone, that video, as it's juxtaposed with the orange traffic cone, is really a compelling opposition. Traffic cones signal imminent danger, warning, lack of safety. So there's so much irony there, both raising the question of Pence's safety. And one of the things the January 6th committee revealed was that Pence was very close to being intercepted by the insurrectionists after they came into the Capitol. But there's also the irony of Trump's absolute lack of interest in the future of a function functioning democracy. It's hard to know if what we're looking at is an act of heroism where Vice President Pence, having been urged to leave the building by the Secret Service, refuses to go and probably refuses because he knows that any delay in the counting of the vote is going to create a constitutional crisis. At the same time, you know, Pence had weeks and many days to more publicly stand up to President Trump and reiterate his intention to certify the vote for Joe Biden as president, and he really never did. So the question is, are we looking at photographs here of the consequences of that? We see what happens when push comes to shove, literally. You know, the bodily energy that's playing out here between Pence and his daughter, Charlotte, it looks almost as though, given that Pence himself is on the phone, he has a phone to his ear in addition to a phone in his other hand, it appears almost as though his daughter might have just thrust her phone playing that video of Trump into his hand for him to watch. So Mike Pence here is essentially doing two things at once. He's watching the Twitter video and he's talking on the phone, presumably trying to get some sort of updates about the security situation above him. And then we have his daughter's tense jaw and body language, the crossed arms, the pursed lips, this gaze at him that's almost a beseeching gaze that really highlights not only the tension of the situation, but the tension essentially between them that's punctuated by that video of Trump. She seems to perhaps channel the anger Pence refused to show publicly toward Trump for putting him in this position. And it's ironic because she also writes for a political website, many of the major figures on that site promoting the big lie to this day. That line of phones, the three phones, it really draws a direct line to Trump, doesn't it? And so thinking about this image from the perspective of the January 6th committee, essentially there's a way to read these photos to say all of these phones, everything points to Trump. And that orange traffic cone really amplifies the committee's overall argument, which is that everything that happened is Trump's fault and that he committed crimes. These photos were taken before Trump lost his Twitter privileges. So one thing they also demonstrate, as you point out, is the real toxicity and danger of Trump let loose on social media. What you get is a sense of Trump's power and dangerousness and the sense that, you know, it's not over until he says so. 
I think when history looks at this image, one of the questions that people will ask is, in the context of Mike Pence at this moment, is this image a picture of a profile in courage or the result of an inevitable series of bad choices? 